All right. God bless you. Bless you. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, <clears throat> this post uh, regarding Christian support for Israel. Uh, let's have a conversation about it. I, uh, I had been up all night working on a paper and um, took a couple of breaks in between writing to, um, to post and uh, posted something early in the morning and um, stuck with the post for a few, but I had to get back to uh, the paper uh, that I was writing uh, that I um, pretty much finished up uh, roughly about six this morning. Bless you, Pastor Sid. God bless you and all of you that are joining. And uh, so I um, uh, got the kids off uh, to school and uh, took a little nap. So I, I get on and uh, I see uh, quite a number of that the post has created uh, quite a stir among some people. And um, um, some people have said some, wow, I was just completely blown away at some of the statements that people made, uh, which evidently is a uh, complete misunderstanding. And uh, so uh, I'm on a. I'm on a address. Uh, actually, I think it would be a good a good discussion. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pastor Sid said, "Man, you know, the, you know, the, the the whole issue is about how people regard evangelicalism. You know, and, and it, you know, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into a conversation about it. Uh, I, I want to just literally go right down the line of uh, what was said, what was meant, and." Uh, what was not said because a lot of times people will read something and you guys experience the same thing. They'll read something that you, you say and respond. And it's almost like you're looking at it and you're like, did this person even read? Did they even try to read what I said? I know it happens to you guys as well. It just, you know, it's not something that only happens to me. It happens to, to, to all of us. People have an uncanny ability to just totally pick something out of what you said and, and their mind creates an entirely different narrative around what you said, almost like they just totally reworded it. And then uh, they come back to you to attack it. It's, it's, it's basically what's called uh, a straw man because they're not really t attacking your statement or your argument. They're attacking a straw man, you know, that's what farmers would do. They didn't want them uh, attacking uh, the crops. So they put a, made it look like there was a guy out there scaring the crows off. Well, the crows don't know if they, you know, if it's a real guy or not. And, and so when they land on the, on the, on the, 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 the you know, the straw man, they're not really landing on the man, the farmer, they're landing on the straw man. And so, you know, in discussion, oftentimes that's exactly what people do. Um, they, they land on the straw man and they think that they are um, talking about what you have said and they're not even close to it. Uh, they're so far away that it's, it's, it's insane that, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, there's a, there's a theory that they call cognitive dissonance theory. And the theory goes that um, whenever there is a belief or an attitude within a person, uh, or when a person seeks to hold more than one belief, um, that is cognition, it creates discomfort, which is dissonance. And so in order to create balance, what they seek to do uh, is remove whatever the level of discomfort is. So here's how that plays out in these kinds of conversations. Somebody reads a post like this and it challenges something that they have held, something that they have believed. They, uh, they are not comfortable with what they have heard, even if it's true. So what they seek to do is to remove the element of discomfort. And, and, and what typically happens is they have recreated um, what you have said in order to discredit it um, so that they feel better. 
And, and, and so this, this, this kind of stuff is all happening within people. It, it's, it's not your problem, it's their problem because they're not hearing in context. The problem is, is that, do you remember those statements? Uh, there was this campaign, campaign back in the 80s to get people to read and you, know, you would see it, that reading is fundamental. Well, let's take that whole campaign to the next level. Reading in context is fundamental. You know, not just reading. I'm glad you can read, but if you can't read in context, that is, if you if if your comprehension of what you're reading uh, is is not good, then your ability to simply read uh, is 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 not helpful. And in fact, it can be harmful because you can be reading words and applying different meanings to exactly what it is that you are you are reading. So. Um, uh, and hit the share button because I, I I want this I want this conversation to be as global as possible. And you know how Facebook will do it; it'll filter who can see what, so forth and so on. But here's the statement that I made uh, uh, on uh, regarding Christian support for Israel. And so I'm gonna uh, kind of clear things up. So it says I'm gonna read it and 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 just kind of go point by point. Uh, but my post said popular in evangelical and Pentecostal charismatic circles. Uh, it just uh, disclaimer here. This is not true for everybody. Every evangelical, every Pentecostal, every charismatic. I said popular in. That's the first thing it is, is, is what's true of some is not true for all. Uh, popular in evangelical and Pentecostal charismatic circles is the notion to support Israel, which typically means favoring Israel politically, praying for Israel's prosperity and the misguided idea that any favorable support, particularly from the U.S., causes God to bless us. That's no pun intended. U.S. us. Time wouldn't permit me to discuss all of the prophetic sensationalism that results from the support Israel theology. Um, but it is important that clarity on the matter is established. Number one, the first issue is to establish that this post, listen carefully, because most of the people that came out wanting to curse me uh, to the nether regions of hell didn't even read the first point. The first issue is to establish that this post does not seek to suggest or encourage anti-Israel, anti-Jewish views, or anti-Semitism of any kind. That was number one. <laughs> number two, second, supporting Israel's right to sovereignty as a nation should not be confused with supporting its politics. It's number two. And I said more will be discussed on this issue. Third, you may have heard the phrase, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which is taken from Psalms, uh, Psalms 122, 6 through 9. But what does it mean in context? That's the operative word right there, in context. This text is not a commandment or promise, but a poem of Jewish reflection on pre-exilic pilgrimages to the city of Jerusalem and its temple that is, of, for Jewish exiles who were cut off from Zion, Jerusalem, because they were in exile. This does not mean that we shouldn't pray for Jerusalem's peace. Another operative word right there. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't. Or for the peace of any nation, for that matter. But to be clear, another powerful contextual clue the text is not instructing another operative word. My Lord, look at all these keys. Uh, the text is not instructing Christians to pray for Jerusalem at all since it was not written to us. In fact, since we understand the full implications of peace as being the enmity that sin created between God and man, which Jesus mediated through his death at the cross and thereby becoming the means by which sinful man can be reconciled to God. How about we pray that unbelieving Jews would believe on Jesus, their Messiah, and have peace, that is, right relationship 
with God through his son. That is, if you are really interested in praying for Israel's peace, that one should have capped it all off. But oh no, the cognitive dissonances, oh no, they're not having any of it. So point four, the idea that praying for Israel guarantees anyone a blessing from God is a gross misunderstanding of the text. Here's the conundrum that is created by that logic. First, there's no formulas for blessings in scripture. I repeat, there are no formulas for blessing. The second is the idea carried to its furthest point. That is, if you bless Israel, you're going to be blessed by God. Carrying that idea to its furthest point suggests that any godly person or ungodly nation can show Israel's support of any kind and end up prospering. See, don't just look at the thing for, for what you're hearing. Follow that statement to its furthest point of conclusion, and that's where it is. That's what it is at the end of the day. Another conundrum is that the idea, uh, and this is related to the second, the idea falsely suggests that God prospered America for showing Israel's support. Well, the logic here sees blessing, um, that is, sees economic wealth as an indicator of true blessing. This idea actually uh, is uh, contradicted in scripture. And, 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 you know, this is basically, this, this has more, that has more to do with Westerners' idea of capitalism and what, and what blessing actually means. So that's a, that's a really Western way of looking at the scripture. So, so it is to equate economic wealth with blessing. Um, the last conundrum here is that the idea falsely suggests that although God punished Israel, watch this now. This is this is this is an inevitable. You're talking about a, a, a oh what tangled webs we weave. Listen to this one. The idea falsely suggests that although God punished Israel for her own violations of His word, He will somehow overlook those same violations committed by nations and individuals and bless them in spite of those violations just as long as they show support for Israel politically, militarily, spiritually, so forth and so on. You see how that's, that's a, a major, uh, not only is it a circular argument, God punishes, chastises Israel for various violations, but if another nation or group of people or individuals who are guilty of those same violations, just as long as they bless Israel, God will bless them, although he chastised the same nation that you're trying to bless for the same thing that you're guilty of. That makes zero sense, zero sense. So, so the fifth point was, I find it interesting that support for Israel theology is most popular among evangelicals the same group, ironically, who typically are characterized by their anti-social justice stances and denials of systemic racism here in the U.S. So it should be no surprise that unconditional blind support exists for a nation politically, operative word, that is openly guilty before God and the entire world of economic discrimination and economic disenfranchisement, racism, and racial injustices against its own black citizenry. Ethiopian Jews, also known as Beta Israel, they emigrated to Yeretz Israel, that is the land of Israel, over 30 years ago. They are authentically, ethnically Jewish. They are subjected to some of the most inhumane treatment, racism, and discrimination by European Jews whose ancestors also emigrated back to Yeretz Israel um, just within the last century. 
This has resulted in the extreme poverty and economic disparities uh, for Beta Israel, including, now this should be an outrage for every Christian who, who, who had the nerve to actually get on my page and accuse me of, of, of going against the word. Here, this is what should be an outrage. It is openly known and reported and evidence exists that, that the state of Israel, we're talking about the state politically, that they have carried out in our modern day, the very kind of things that, that uh, whites did to black people, Tuskegee experiment, syphilis, all kinds of things. They, they are in our current day carrying those same kinds of experience, uh, experiments out on black Jews to the degree that it has caused them sterilization so that it not only prohibits them from populating in the land of Israel, but it guarantees that they will be exterminated. Because if you cannot reproduce, you're going to be wiped out as a group of people. This is modern day genocide. So, so, so you tell me, what kind of support are you talking about? I mean, what kind of support are you talking about? So let's, 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 let's discuss this support Israel theology. Let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. Number one. Number one, get, take the emotive out of the whole discussion so that you can, so that you can understand the, 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 the rationale and the posting context. Number one, the discussion is not about all Jewish people. It's about the state of Israel politically. That was made very, very clearly. There is a difference between talking about Jewish people and the state of Israel. Talking about the state of Israel is not talking about Israel. Two different things. One is a nation, a political sovereign nation. The other is talking about Jewish people. And, and this discussion is not about who's Jewish and who is not. That's not what I got into. Clearly, I believe that there are all kinds of Jews. I believe Ashkenazim are Jewish. Those who, uh, who, um, whose ancestors immigrated into Northern Europe and came back to Israel in the uh, 50s and 60s or immigrated back. Uh, so I, I do not embrace the Khazar theory. That, that these are fake Jews, that they are merely uh, just descendants of the Khazars and they converted to uh, Judaism. Uh, Adam Kessler's the 13th tribe. I don't subscribe to that. So clearly this, this article has, is, is not denying whether or not European or Ashkenazi Jews are actually Jewish. That's the furthest thing from this article. Neither is it a denial of Sephardim, that is uh, Spanish Jews. Uh, it is not a denial uh, of Beta Israel. Clearly, they are as Jewish as anybody else. Uh, in fact, the, 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 this article actually is concerned for their well-being. Uh, so there's nothing anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, or anything about what I am saying. Um, I clearly uh, acknowledge Mizraim, that is uh, Jews that uh, live in the Middle East, that have always lived in the Middle East, uh, and even in parts of uh, um, East Africa, uh, whether you're talking about Egypt, whether you're talking about uh, Libya, uh, Northern Africa, whether you're talking about uh, the Sinai uh, uh, region, whether you're talking about uh, uh, on the peninsula of Arabia or even in the area. We're talking about those Jews who have always remained in that area. They are called Mizra'i. So this is, this is not a conversation about who's Jewish and who's not. And I will not have that conversation with people who come to the page 
attempting to make that uh, make the discussion about that, that that, you know, you don't get to do that. You don't get to turn a conversation into something that you want it to be so that you can uh, grind your axe, because a lot of people have an axe to grind. And so they go from page to page looking for a way to um, to turn every conversation towards their argument. And that's not happening here. And that's not going to happen. So that's not what this conversation is about. And um, and 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 so clearly you have seen that I have ignored those individuals who have attempted to do that uh, because uh, until they learn how to read in context and 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 stay on task and discuss the matters that are at hand, uh, then it's no sense in entertaining individuals that love going down slippery slopes, bunny trails, and following red herrings away from the argument itself. So so. I don't know why people think I'm an idiot. And people love to challenge me. There are some people, if I just get on and say, have a blessed day, somebody's going to find something about the word blessed and seek to challenge me because they really do. They they just they want to make a fool of me. I think something in some people, uh, uh, and, and they do it to you too. They Some people look for something to be disagreeable about, even when there's nothing to disagree on, right? So- I get that. And typically I ignore those kind of people. Um, Today is just one of those days where sometimes the record just needs to be set straight. This post is not an against Israel post, but it should be known that when we're talking about Israel in this post, Israel, I am talking about the state, the political state. That is not talking about Jewish people, all right? Uh, So the second piece to understand is is that if by offering this kind of critique against a political nation, not, not, not particularly against all Jewish people, since Jewish people are very, very varied ethnically, not only uh, in cultures, but also in the way that they look, since this doesn't seek to address that, I'm not talking about all Jewish people. I'm talking about Israeli politics. Now, if you're equating that with being anti-Jewish, then I wonder what you would say about Jesus, who spent a lot of his time preaching, offering strong critiques against various strains of Judaism in his own day. I mean, Jesus, the greatest Jew of them all, was he being anti-Semitic by literally telling some Jews, you are of your father, the devil? I guess Jesus was anti-Semitic too. I guess all of the prophets that stood to uh, to, to uh, prophesy and, and to speak words of condemnation and criticism and critique against their own people, I guess they were being anti-Semitic too. What kind of sense does that make? Was Stephen being anti-Semitic when he stood before the Sanhedrin and said, the only reason why I'm standing here is that it's consistent uh, with the trajectory of our history. Every time God has raised up a man of God and a prophet uh, to correct our people, here's what we have always done with them historically. We've always tried to kill them and imprison them and silence their voices. That's what Stephen said to his own people. And guess what? As soon as he was done, they stoned him to death. I guess Stephen was being anti-Semitic too for what he said. And yet they were not talking about a Zion state. They were talking to Jewish people about Jewish behavior. I am talking about a Zion state. So so, so, so get, get the facts right. You know, I don't. I don't know who some of these people think. I, I, I'm one thing about me, and most people should know. I'm not reckless. I don't just run off at the mouth and talk about things that I don't know about. I read a lot, and I study. I, 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 I'm not r- right about everything clearly, and I'm not wrong about everything either. But, but don't let's not pretend that I'm some idiot, some babbling fool, just running my mouth. And I don't know what, <laughs> come on, my, 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 the, my, my amount of student debt 
student loan debt can testify to the fact that I've not been sitting around under a tree twiddling my thumb watching the cars pass by during the day. So, so, so clearly, I know a thing or two about what I'm talking about. So let's put this, I had an uncle that would always say, now he would, he would do this, now let's put it in the proper perspective. <laughs> my uncle Mito, so I, I wanna, I wanna uh, channel my uncle Mito and say, now let's put it in the proper perspective. This conversation is about the state of Israel and, and, its, and its practices, all right? So, so number one, you cannot turn around and use the Bible to say, he, you listen, you cannot do it. I don't care who told you. You cannot use the Bible. You cannot use Genesis 12 and 3. A statement that God made to Abraham, Abraham, who said, I will bless those that bless you, and in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. You cannot use what God told Abraham in context to apply to blessing a political state. It's not the same thing. It's not even close to the same thing. The state of Israel and Jewishness are not the same thing. I mean, I mean, I don't know how how to get you to even understand. If you can't understand that, you don't need to be in the conversation. You need to go to your local library and do some reading before you can join this level of conversation because most people in this conversation understand the distinct difference between talking about Jewish people and talking about the state of Israel. Now, because there are Jewish people in the state of Israel doesn't make the state politically Israel. And so, and so, and so all this leads to is a whole bunch of dispensational nonsense, prophetic sensationalism and spookism. Listen, you're not going to spook me into believing that offering a critique against, against uh, uh, discrimination and racism by the state of Israel is somehow going to get me on the wrong side of God. You're not going to spook me with your spooky Christianity because that ain't biblical. Number one, you can't work no witchcraft on me. Get that straight. Trying to spook people with scripture is witchcraft, all right? So sat down somewhere with that kind of nonsense. Please find 12 seats and sit in all of them because you can't spook me or any of us with the nonsense, with the narrative that would suggest that to offer a right critique about righteousness and ethical justice against the state of Israel is somehow gonna land me on the wrong side of God. Actually, you don't know the word of God if that's what you believe. You, you really don't know the word of God. And you're not ready for this conversation if you think that by thinking that way, you're going to correct me. You're going to correct me. No, you're not correcting me. You can't correct me on that because you're wrong. Why, why do people who need the most correction think that they can correct everybody? That's what I find on Facebook. Folks who are all the way in the wrong always have the most to say, they have more tenacity than the folks who are actually right about their position. You ever notice that the people who are the least informed, the most wrong, are the most tenacious holding on to views that they are completely uninformed about. And they shake on it like a, like a, like a ravenous pit bull, you know, and, 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 on positions that they're completely uninformed about, underinformed, and completely wrong about. And then they'll they'll be trying to tell you, have you thinking, I mean, not even thinking, but trying to get you to believe uh, that, uh, and, and this is the one that kills me all the time, you need to go and do research. Folks who never do research, telling people who, who do research all the time how they need to research. You, you need to research a little bit more. Really? So tell me about, tell me about how you how you, uh, you do 12 hours of research in a day. Tell me how you don't actually go to sleep at night because you're researching. 
Uh, tell me about the research portals uh, that you actually use. T t tell me about how you're engaging uh, the world of scholarship. Tell me about the, the research journals that you, tell me about the, the research, and, and don't tell me about YouTube videos and, 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 and Wikipedia. Uh, uh, don't tell me about that. Don't, don't tell me about uh, uh, WordPress blog spots that you're reading. No, 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 no. You're not doing research. What you're doing is called historical revisionism, pseudo uh, uh, intellectualism, pseudo scholarship, and regurgitation. That's what you're doing. You just read something that somebody else said, and then you're regurgitating it. So, so, so let's get that right. Let's get that right. So, so, so let's get into the meat of the thing. See, I didn't got all upset, got all worked up, and um, so, so, so we've established what we're not talking about and what we are talking about. So, so the other thing is this. The other piece is, again, what does it mean? What, what does it mean that I will bless them that bless you? And it's, first of all, in context, you cannot take everything that is said in scripture and apply it to you. That's just, that's, that's, that's hermeneutical violation number one. You cannot take everything that applies in uh, that that's said in scripture and apply it wherever you want and first of all there are some things that apply to abraham that don't apply to 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 all jews oh i i thought all israel was in all abraham well first of all let's get this straight abraham was not born and raised in the land of israel abraham came from an area further east than that and when he was on his way up to Haran, which is just south of Turkey, and, 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 and yet northeast of where Israel is today, God was telling him that wherever you walk, I'm going to give you all of this land. Now, clearly, the Jews never inherited all of the land in between, uh, in, uh, in between Ur and Haran, and certainly did not inherit all of the land in between Haran and Israel. The territory that God actually gave the tribes is a much small area. So, so did God lie when he said to Abraham, I'm gonna give you all this territory? No, because he gave it to Abraham. He didn't give it to all of Abraham's descendants. So don't tell me. See, so you gotta tighten up on your exegesis. Don't come for me when you need to tighten up on yours. Everything that applies to Abraham doesn't necessarily apply to all Jews, you see? So, 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 so let's get that straight. So when God said to Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee, he was talking to Abraham. Okay, then I hear somebody else. Oh, turn with me, turn with me over in the scriptures, the Numbers chapter 24. Well, let's go there. From 22, in fact, let's deal with the entire pericope. From 22 to 24 is the narrative about uh, uh, Balak, uh, the king of Peor, hiring the false prophet Balaam to work a curse on Israel. Now, contextually, they are tribal. Israel is tribal, and they are in the wilderness. They're not even in their inherited land. Oh, oh, we, we let me say that again, because I think you might have missed that. They are tribal and they are not even in their inherited land, all right? So, so, so contextually, you got to get this. They are sojourners at this time. That's really important to understanding the text, because if you have not considered that, then you don't need to be trying to interpret uh, Balaam's words, right? So, so, so here's the problem. Here's the problem. When Israel was delivered from Egypt, they were walking through territories that were occupied by various nations. You know, it's kind of like uh, when you, you, you're in, you're in uh, Southern California, it seems like as, as far as you can drive, you're going from one town to the next. To the next. It's not like it's, it's not like it's like one town, 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 like one town. Well, everywhere that Israel walked along their journey, they were passing through territories that belong to people. And, and so contextually, it's important to understand that 
in the ancient Near East, in, in, in the, in the uh, context of the ancient Near East, when nations would pass through the territories belonging to other nations, that was the equivalent of making a threat to them. They're like, hold on. And they'd send all their best men to the border to wipe you out because they, they were sensing threat. So, so let's understand exactly what happens. Israel doesn't mean any harm to anybody. They're just on their way somewhere. But they are passing through people's territories. And so these nations would become hostile to Israel, not because they were Israel, but because they didn't know who the heck they were and why they're in their land. Like, what are you doing here? At, at one point, Moses decided to start sending people, uh, um, basically ambassadors, to go ahead and say, just, just tell people that we're just passing through, uh, bring, bring, bring offerings, bring, bring gifts. Let's, let's help people calm down. We don't want to get people excited. We don't want people to think that we're here for trouble. We're just trying to move through. We, we, that's it. We're not trying to start trouble. But these other nations did not understand that. They were not simply trying to attack Israel because they knew who they were and, oh, we're against the people of God. They didn't even know who these people were. In fact, if you were in the milieu of the ancient Near East, and you had seen these tribal people, these nomadic people passing by, you would not have been able to distinguish them from any other Bedouin kind of people because these people culturally looked like a lot of the other folks. So, 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 so folks didn't know what was happening. And so, so God gave Israel a promise in the days of their sojourn that anybody that blesses you that's why, that's why Balaam could not get his curse off because God had placed a blessing on Israel in their sojourn so that nations that would be kind to them while they were in their sojourn, God said, I'm going to treat that nation kindly. But the nation that is not kind, that is, seeks to their harm and seeks to curse them, I'm going to come against that nation for their sake. That's what that's all about. And so the conversation that Balaam has with Balak, the man that hired him, is he, Balaam was like, hey man, what are you doing? I hired you to curse these people. And Balaam was like, hey man, listen, li you know, listen dog, I try. I literally try. I just couldn't do it. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I was stopped multiple times. And um, and he says, I just, you know, God told me I, I can't bless whom he's blessed. Uh, I mean, I can't curse whom, whom he's cursed. And, uh, and so, so, so then ba uh, Balak is like, well, don't bless him or don't curse him. Just don't do anything. Just, you know, I, 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 I mean, if you can't curse him, I'd rather that you just don't even bless him. He says, because these people are enemies of mine. So you got to understand the politics that's going on. You know, uh, 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 get out of your super duper pseudo spiritual mindset and understand the politics of the ancient Near East. Balak was trying to protect, in his thinking, uh, his his sovereign boundaries and thinking that these people are a threat to me. By this time, uh, they're starting to hear stories about how Yahweh has done things for. Uh, for this nation, and they are afraid. So, 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 the best thing in their mind is, man, if we can just get rid of these people, we have nothing to fear because we've heard that their God literally opened up a portion of the Red Sea and then drowned the Egyptians. We certainly don't want that happening to us. And 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 and, and so, um, so when ba so when Balaam utters in Numbers chapter twenty four. Uh, he says, he says to God, he says, you know, I've learned that uh, um, that um, your, your, your people are blessed and that you'll bless who blesses your people and you'll curse who curses your people. So you've got to understand that in context. This was God's special provision for his people in their sojourn because of the uh, imminent threat and danger that they were in as they were passing through the land. So you've got to understand that. So, 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 so 
you can't try to apply that to the political state of Israel and say that uh, if we bless the state, that we're going to be blessed by God. See, see that, that, that appeals to people who love prosperity theology in one form or the other. Now, everybody who, uh, uh, everybody who embraces prosperity theology doesn't necessarily embrace the word faith kind. But make no mistake about it, that's only one kind of prosperity theology. Evangelicals are far more guilty of prosperity theology uh, than, than even the word faith. Sometimes their prosperity theology uh, puts word faith prosperity theology brand to shame because evangelicals innately believe that physical wealth uh, is, is a sign that God has blessed America and, 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 that, and, 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 and that this is, this is, this is a sign of our, of our blessing that we are a nation that is right with God and all of this other stuff. They, they actually believe that. They actually believe that, uh, that, that uh, living well it, from, from, from an economic standpoint uh, is, is, is a sign of blessing. They believe that. It, it, it's, it's part of their theology. And, and then they'll get on and they will critique Creflo Dollar, Fred Price for all of that uh, kind of theology, but they are just as guilty of it in a different form. Only theirs is cloaked in this kind of stuff right here. Uh, support, bless Israel theology and, 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 you know, tithing theology and all this other stuff that they attempt to use to formulate uh, how God blesses uh, people. So, 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 so listen, um, it's still prosperity theology of a different stripe, but it's nonetheless prosperity theology. So, 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 so you cannot use these scriptures to say that, uh, okay, so let's deal with Psalms 122. So, so Psalms 122. In fact, let me, let me read it. I'm going to read it. So, so, um, let me pull up my, uh, let me pull up the text here. Stay with me for a second, because this is the seminal text that is used for uh, support Israel theology. Now, there are going to be people who would, oh, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, elder, elder, I I'd be careful if I was you. Listen, I, you know, spookism doesn't work with me. So, so this is a song of ascent, song, a, a prayer for Jerusalem, right? Let's read it in context. Just a couple of verses. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go uh, to the house of the Lord. Um, our feet were standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city should be silently united where the tribes, the, the Lord's tribes go up to give thanks to the name of the Lord. This is the ordinance for Israel. The, their thrones for judgment are placed thrones of the house of David. Pray for the well-being of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls, security within your fortresses. Because of my brothers and friends, I will say, may peace be in you. Uh, in other words, shalom. Because of the house of the Lord, I will pursue uh, your, uh, your prosperity. So, so contextually, this, this particular uh, psalm is a poem. Now, one person said, well, all of the uh, psalms are poetic. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't rebuttal anything. Contextually, we're talking about what kind of poem, that is, what was the, what was the, Rome, the poem written for? This poem was written as a reflection of Jewish exiles, people who were no longer in the land who are reflecting on the land. They're, they're reflecting on the ruined state of Jerusalem because they were dragged from Jerusalem to Babylon. You got to understand how far that is. And, and their land, their city, their beloved city was left in ruins. So, so this, is, this poem is a poem of reflection by exiles who are thinking about Jerusalem's 
peace and prosperity. Oh, that in other words, it would prosper again. That that it would that you know. In other words, they they're, they're thinking about the uh, their well being and all of that other stuff, and 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 how God would restore the ruin and the city would be rebuilt. Um, this is what they are talking about. So 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 it is a poem of reflection, particularly uh, verse nine uh, is uh, or verse six rather. Pray for the well being of Jerusalem. May those who love you uh, be secure. This is this is this is this is an in-house discussion. This is this is not talking about other nations that if they pray for Jerusalem, that somehow God is going to bless them. That's attempting to apply a meaning to this text that is not here. This, there's no instruction in this. The 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 there's no even when even when the psalmist says pray for. Uh, obviously, that is written in the imperative form, but this is not instructing people. This is not instructing a wider audience about what they should do. This is an imperative to other Jews who are in exile, as the as the poet is, to pray for Jerusalem. It's of equal interest for them to pray for its restoration, its rebuilding, its its prosperity, so forth and so on. There's no universal commandment or application to this that transcends culture and time and that should instruct us that this is something that we need to do or something that we should do and that there is some sort of uh, blessing attached to those who do it. There's nothing that says, notice, uh, may those who love you be secure. See, see. You thought prosperity had to do with, with simply being economically wealthy, so forth and so on. I'm going to help you understand exactly what this poet is saying. Remember in the letter of John, when he opens it up, it is a letter by genre. He opens the letter up and he says, um, he, he, he says uh, to the, the community, the church that he was writing to, uh, he says, um, uh oh what's the what's the what's the phrase how does he start it out he says um oh boy it slipped my mind what's uh um uh, boy i can't remember it's it's totally slipped my mind the text in john when he opens up and he talks about um may uh may this letter he's uh, oh boy good gracious i can't believe that I have forgotten the, this particular text. Nonetheless, the point of it is to say, John opened up his letter uh, basically saying uh, that, uh, uh, I wish above all things, there it is, I knew it would come, I knew it would come. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. The, the, the idea of John's words is exactly the same thing that you find here. John is writing to a group of people, there's no commandment of God, there's no special promise in that. That's the way people wrote letters for, a thou for, for better than 2,000 years. In fact, when we were writing letters back in the 70s and 80s, as folks don't write letters hardly today, we always started letters out in the same way. Uh, uh, hello, this is uh, Damon. I hope this letter finds you uh, uh, doing well and everybody in your house is, is doing fine, so forth and so on. That's, that's not... That's not a commandment of, of you're, you're, not, you're not putting a blessing on them. You're not imposing a blessing on them. You're simply saying, my desire is that by the time you, this letter reaches you, that all things are well. Well, that is the very same thing that John said when he wrote his letter to the church community. I, I wish above all things, my desire is that at the time of this reading, that you're prospering and that you're, you're healthy. Th this is my desire. You can't then take that and say, God said in his word, he desires that you would prosper and be in good. No, see, see, now you are not interpreting scripture properly. There's nothing didactic about John's statement there. That is, that is how letters were constructed. That is a greeting. You can't make something theological about a greeting unless there is some real theology in the greeting. But this is not a theological statement John makes. It's a greeting. It is a standard kind of greeting. 
I hope that at the time of the, this letter that you're doing well. You can't then take that and build a doctrine around it and says, this is how God wants you to prosper. And this is how God wants you to be healthy because you heard John use it. Well, in the same way, you cannot make a doctrine out of exilic Jews who are reflecting back on how Jerusalem used to be, how the wall used to be, how the temple used to be. And they're just longing for uh, 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 to see it thrive again. You can't take a and build a doctrine on that and say that if people uh, uh, pray that prayer, that God's going to turn around and bless them. That's nonsense. Cut that nonsense out. Who taught you? Who taught you? Who taught you to interpret scripture that way? Listen to what he says. And, and, and the proper word is not prosperity in the connotation that you understand it. He says, these are Jews talking to other Jews in exile. Pray for the well-being of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls, security within your fortresses. Because of my brothers and friends, I will say may peace be in you because of the house of the Lord, our, our, our God. So you can't take this. That's like people taking Jeremiah 29 and 10. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you. So who's the you? Because the you are exilic Jews. So when were you carried off into captivity, Babylonian or Assyrian or any kind? When, when God is specifically talking to his captive people, his people in captivity, and saying that I've got plans to bring you out of here. You're not going to, uh, I have not brought you here for you to become extinct in captivity. I know the plans that I have towards you. And I've got plans literally to bring you back out of here and bring you back in, into your land. I've got plans for you to get back on track with my word. I've got plans. But the, so, oh, but we're, we're so attracted to thoughts of peace and, and to bring you to a prosperous end. See, prosperity folks like stuff like that because they get to rework, redefine, and reinterpret the text so that it applies to living in America, living in an upper middle class, wealthy kind of existence and all that. See, that's how they apply that. And, and who taught you? Who, where did you learn? If, if that's what you're coming up with, where did you learn to interpret scripture that way? Because you've got problems with how you read the text. That, that's the real issue. The real issue is how you look at scripture, not how I look at it, but how you look at it. So, so let me, let me, let me say this finally. Um, let me say this finally. Uh, again, there are no formulas to blessing. I, I, I don't care how much money John Hagee has got you stuffing your envelope with, writing checks, uh, or, or, or uh, 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 a night to honor Israel, you know, showing up in, 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 uh, San Antonio, thinking that you want to know, I'm going to tell you why that's, why that's ridiculous. Number one, number one, I'm going to tell you, here's why that's ridiculous. First of all, again, it's just another prosperity uh, uh, formula that here's how you, you end up getting blessed. But the same kind of people who believe that are the same kind of people who think because they're preaching in some sort of talit, that because they've got some Jewish symbolism on their body, because they're walking around with fringes, with zit zit hanging from their shirt, that somehow uh, their association with Jewish symbols is going to bring them blessings. That's the same kind of nonsense. I, I don't care. I don't care if you got a star of David chain. I don't care. And I'm not being anti-Semitic. I'm just stating the facts here. Wearing a tallit and wearing zit zit. And, 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 and a star of David chain and sending checks to the state of Israel is not going to get God on your side. It's not going to get God on your side. Blessing is not a result of formula. Blessing is a result of grace. And Paul said, they that are in Christ are blessed with blessed Abraham. And so if you really want to be blessed, that blessing is found in Christ. And when Paul interpreted 
uh, uh, God's words to Abraham about through your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Paul said that that seed was not just, he does not deny or undermine the literal interpretation of what God says to uh, Abraham. He says, however, that seed was not just plural, as in all of Abraham's descendants. That seed was specifically focused on one seed, one descendant of Abraham, namely Christ. And so he says, uh, if any man be in Christ, then is he Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you want to talk about being blessed, then you need to get in Jesus because that's where the real blessing is. It, see, see, if this is the same kind of idea. I, I, I've heard people literally say, oh, see, some of y'all folks, y'all hanging around the wrong people. You want to be wealthy, you got to get around wealthy folks. You know, when I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm in the elevator, you know, I try to rub shoulders with, with the wealthy people. I try to get around. See, that, that's, that's foolery. That's cooning in, that's cooning in the church. That kind of nonsense that thinks that things rub off on you by osmosis and by association. You don't become blessed because you hanging around rich people, rubbing shoulders with them in elevators and chatting with them at the water cooler. That, that, that doesn't get you wealthy. And it's the same kind of thinking that causes people to think that if I associate with the state of Israel, if I associate with people who are Jewish, then God's going to bless me. Now, these are Christians saying that. So I almost want to say, so being in Christ, in other words, being regenerated, having the Holy Spirit, living on the inside of you, eternal life is not blessing enough. So you make the same error of the Galatians thinking that you have begun in Christ, but you need to be perfected somehow by returning to a way of thinking. That, that It's the same kind of nonsense. It's the same kind of nonsense. Besides all that, John Hagee is a false teacher anyway. Run tell that. Uh, let, let's name all of the, let's talk about his blood moon prophecy and all the other stuff that he, he sells books on and sensationalizes about. And he's become wealthy lying to the people of God about different ways that they can become blessed that have nothing to do with the scripture. And then folks come for me. Don't come for me, come, go for John Hagee. He's the one bamboozling people. He's the one hoodwinking folks. Uh, like Malcolm said, you've been had, you've been took, you've been bamboozled, led astray, run amok. It ain't me on my page bamboozling folks. I'm the one that's trying to blow the cover on, 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 the, on the game, on, 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 the, on the hoodwinking. And then folks got the nerve to say, I, I'm, 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 oh, you're getting out of pocket. You, you, you're getting beside yourself. Humble down, Richard said. Who taught you? Where did you come from? Where, who taught you? Come on, folks. Come on, come on. So, 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 so again, it, you, you, so, so, so here's my final challenge. You want to bless Israel, right? You, you, you think you want to bless Israel. So let, let's talk about blessing Israel. You want to bless Israel. Here's what you do. Because I've already given you, uh, I, I've, 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 already, I've already given you some, uh, you know, we've already straightened this whole thing out. So if you want to bless some Jews, I'm going to tell you the Jews who are in the most need of those checks. It's, it's, it's those who are called Beta Israel or the Ethiopian Jews. Many, many of them are homeless. They're economically disenfranchised. The state of Israel practices housing discrimination against them. Uh, it persecutes them. It, it is literally practiced uh, biological experimentation on them so that it has caused the women to be sterilized. They're living in abject poverty, in shame, right? This is their land as much as it is any, any other Jew that belongs there, right? And, and they can't get anybody to stand up for them. If, if you want to bless Israel, that is Jewish people, why don't you start a GoFundMe or some sort of campaign and raise money 
for that group, that demographic of Jewish people. Because I can tell you that the Ashkenazim own most of the wealth in the land. They're not hurting for anything. These are the people that control the politics of the state of Israel. So, so they're not the ones that need your money. And, 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 and them getting your money is not going to get you points with God anyway. But, 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 but if there is any blessing, the blessing is in giving. And Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible tells us he that has pity upon the poor lends to the Lord. So if you want to really be in step with scripture, why don't you bless those people who are being persecuted, who are being disenfranchised, who, who racial discrimination, economic, housing, schooling, education, all of that, those people are experiencing literally uh, the same kind of, they're, they're literally having the same kind of experience that black Americans have had in this country for decades. So if you want to write your check, write a check out and find out how you can send them your money. Don't, don't come telling me about, about this other prosperity nonsense. I don't care what Christians for Israel, uh, Jesus for uh, uh, Jews for Jesus. I don't care what organization told you what. If Beta Israel is not getting any of that support, then you need to stop sending your support. Because if you want to be a blessing, bless the people who need it the most, not the people who don't. And as I stated in the in the post, if 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 if, if you want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem so much. How is it that you're a Christian and you don't have a more biblical definition of what peace actually is? See, see, the more, the more expanded, uh, the, the more complete understanding of shalom is not about, uh, is not about physical safety and, 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 and the absence of physical harm. If that's what it is, then none of us have that. But the real shalom is in the right relationship between, between sinners and the Father. And Jesus has mediated uh, that enmity between sinners and the Father so that, so that those who were once separated from God because of their sin now through Christ can be justified by faith and have right relationship. So since you wanna pray for peace, pray for that peace because that's the real peace. That is the ultimate idea of peace. In fact, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Pray that those in Israel who are Jews, who do not know Yeshua HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace, pray that they get to know him so that they can have right relationship with the Father. So, but if you're, if you're spending your prayer praying for their defense and all that other stuff, then, then, then your understanding, your understanding of peace uh, is not theologically developed. It's not theologically developed. It, it, you, you, you don't have to. Uh, so, so if in your dispensational theology, God is going to protect Israel anyway, why are you praying that he protects them? When, when according to your dispensational theology, he's going to protect them anyway. He's going to protect the state. If, if that's what you believe, what are you wasting those kind of prayers for, praying for their defense? In fact, I don't even think Israel, the state, needs your prayers because they've got the most advanced defense system in all of the world, even more advanced than America. Pray for the real kind of peace. That is for the salvation of people who are Jewish, who don't even know their Jewish Messiah. So, so, so how are you going to let somebody talk you out of what, what praying for peace really is? Praying for peace is praying that lost men become reconciled to God. That's what praying for peace is. So if you want to pray for Jerusalem, symbolically Jerusalem, you want to pray for Jewish people to find that kind of peace. That's what you need to be praying for. Don't let John Hagee and Perry Stone and all of these other numb knuckles try and tell you about putting, uh, send me a check and we'll make sure we get it over to Israel and, and God's going to bless you. How are folks, how are folks so filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and 
so easily hoodwinked by these kinds of uh, things here. You, you know, I, I, if, 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 you know, everybody ought to know a hustle when they see it. And, 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 and then you go, you're so spiritual, but you have no discernment about things like that. How are you spiritual with no discernment? Being spiritual means having discernment. Being spiritual means that you know the okie doke when you see it. And, and this support Israel theology is the okie doke, my friend. Now, does that mean that I don't believe in Israel's right to sovereignty? I absolutely believe that they have the right to sovereignly exist. I support that. I've never said anything in my post to the contrary. They have the right to exist. They have the right to defend themselves against all attacks, whether it's from the Palestinians, whether it's from uh, Jordan or whoever. They've got the right to defend themselves and to protect their border. But I tell you what they don't. I tell you, I tell you, and 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 but I tell you another thing. Um, you want God to bless them, but they're shipping, they're they're shipping Africans out of Israel and threatening them that if they don't leave, we're gonna throw you in prison. Right? People who look like you and me, this is what they're telling them. Uh, they 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 there's there's no there's no uh, process for uh, uh, immigration. There's no process for citizenship. There's, there's get the heck out of our land. And if you don't uh, get out, we're going to imprison you indefinitely. You know what that's called? That's called enslaving people. But oh, but you want you want to pray that the state is blessed. That's what you want to pray for. How how do you want God? to put his blessings on injustice. And then you turn right around and cry about injustice right here in America. Don't, don't let me catch you on talking about injustice and then talking about blessing the state of Israel with all of the injustice. They're doing the same kind of things there. I don't care what Benjamin Netanyahu says. They're doing the same kind of things there that America has been practicing against blacks here. And, 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 and it's not a coincidence that the people who, who want to support them the most are the very people who look past injustices, social injustices here in America and, and, and deny systemic racism all the time. They look past that. Then they look to Israel and they look past it there. And the only thing they can see is that as long as I'm, you, you know what kind of people believe that kind of stuff? People like Sarah Palin, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I had people literally, I had to unfollow folks. I, 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 I very rarely do that, uh, except for when people just get really outrageous. When, when Donald Trump was talking about the real state of, the real capital of Israel is Jerusalem, I had all these people. You know, folks are just, they fall for all kinds of okie doke. I had all kinds of people, black and white, talking about, oh, yeah, that's why God put Donald Trump in office. He's recognizing the truth. Even Donald Trump knows. See, that's why God raised him up. And, and, and talking about uh, uh, um, uh, Jerusalem is the true, the true capital of, of, of Israel, so forth and so on. See, 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 now you're getting your biblical theology mixed up with politics that you don't even know about. You don't even understand your own politics here in America, but now you're trying to be an expert on Israeli politics? Listen, listen, the Jerusalem of Psalms 122 and the Jerusalem in Israel now, it is the same land, but it is not politically the same, uh, the, the same entity. It's not the same thing. It's the same land, but understand the difference between land and politics. Israel as the land is not Israel as the state. It's not the same thing. Israel as a people are not the same thing as Israel as the state. So understand that, you know, the, this, this support, support Israel theology is, is support Israel politically. And, 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 and if you can support uh, injustice anywhere and, and then cry about it here, 
um, we have zero to talk about because 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 you've got all sorts of confusion going on in your head, you, you know. And, and then if you can overlook injustice here and overlook it there, claiming to be in support of it, we have nothing to talk about because you have all sorts of confusion going on in your head. So 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 um, that's what I wanted to say about this. I, I um I wanted to straight straighten some things out. Because folks actually, they get all in, 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 a, in, a, in a tight, all uptight and, and, and oh, watch out, preacher. I, I, I seen what you said about Israel. See, that's that spookism, like, like, like uh, evoking the name Israel. You got to be careful. Oh, be careful, preacher. No, you be careful. Again, who taught you? Where did you come from? Where did you learn from? Uh, no, nobody needs to be careful about telling the truth. You never need to be careful. That's the problem. Folks have too much concern about truth, which, which always causes them to compromise, water down, because they're too beholden to what people think if they say what they have to say. And, 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 and see, I'm just not that guy. I, 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 I really don't have those concerns about telling the truth. I don't worry about what people can take away from me for telling the truth. I really don't. I used to. I used to. And, and, and so the people who are always, oh, be careful, those are the kind of people that you need to be careful around because those are the kind of people who are always filtering the truth with, 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 with political correctness and all kinds of other stuff because they're more afraid of what people are going to think by what they say than, what, than, than being concerned about what really needs to be said. And the post that I made needed to be said. Somebody needed to offer a healthy, solid critique to this show support for Israel theology. Now, am I discouraging you from, 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 from well-wishing uh, 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 for Jews and all this other stuff, praying for Jews? I'm not discouraging anybody from doing that. I'm telling you that your theology is, is not biblical if you think that praying for or sending money to the state of Israel is going to cause God to bless you. That's what I'm saying. That's what this post was about. It was, it, you see what I mean? And, 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 and so, ah, I'm done with the, with, with the rant. I, I will, I will, let me see. I don't have my glasses, but let me try to take um, a couple of questions here. Is there anybody, let me hear from somebody who doesn't understand that they, they don't understand. If there's somebody on here right now, you don't understand, type a question in. Let, let's see if we can we can help you. And, and, and thanks to uh, Jamar uh, Spurlock, uh, Ryan Robinson, and a number of the other people that um, that were going to bat for the context of the post and challenging people to 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 reread it and read it with understanding and and, and saying where did he say this? Where did he say that? Thank God for you and other people. Uh, like you, who 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 actually um, who, who who took it and understood it, and and they were you, you know I, thank God I, I really appreciate that you know I I really do because I'm not asking I I didn't post it to get likes loves or anything I posted it to offer a much needed critique for people to learn and for people to rethink their views and their positions and 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 so I really appreciate that. Um, uh, Let's see. Uh, um, anybody with any 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 questions, anything that you misunderstand or misunderstood about the post or even this, I want to hear from you. I, I really do. I, I, I'm not going to embarrass you or anything. I, I just want to make sure that when at the end of this, there's complete understanding about what was said, why it was said, and, and, and really to straighten out a lot of the, the wrong kind of ideology uh, that you know, yeah. So, so uh, anybody, I'm I'm looking at the bottom of the page now. Um, uh, let's see. Um, anybody? Anybody? Okay, I don't I don't see. I, I I well, thank God, thank God. I um, uh, you know, thank God. So I, again, if anybody has any questions. Uh, or 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 comments. I mean, after this, it, you know, we, we we can go ahead and put it to rest. If you want to continue the discussion uh, on on your page or even on the post itself, 
I mean, let, let's, let's do that. Cause that's what it's for. It's for really healthy dialogue and this, that, and the other. But when people come saying you said this and you said that and, and totally misunderstanding, that's, that's not healthy. It, you know, it, and it, that doesn't um, gender edification at all. It only genders uh, strife and confusion and discord. Uh, if, if you're going to question what somebody has said, at least seek to understand what they said before you take a position against it. And I find people are so poised to, to, to be disagreeable that they won't even understand what you're saying before they're already against it. And, 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 and that's, not, that's not the spirit of humility that we ought to have. Um, you know, they, they've even taught us, they've even taught us in, you know, conflict resolution that when somebody says something that uh, maybe you don't like, maybe you don't understand, is say, you know, to say to them, uh, if I'm understanding correctly, I heard you say, right? So what does that do? Well, uh, that disarms the person because number one, you're not actually accusing them. You're, you're leaving room for error on your part by saying, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, this is what I heard you say. And, and you've left room in there for, uh, for them to say, yeah, you didn't really hear that right. And then they don't have to worry about the accusation because you never actually accuse them, right? So, so if a person, if people don't understand uh, what you're saying, or if you don't understand what somebody else is saying, at least start off with the, if I'm understanding you correctly, here's what you are saying, as opposed to saying, oh, error, uh, or, or, or doing, you know, the, you know, doing a Trump. No, 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 you know, you know, just, you know, you're, you're, you're not even, you're, you're not even listening. You're just, carte blanche uh, dismissing it without even seeking understanding. And, and so we've got to, you know, we, we, we need classes on listening. <laughs> we need classes on thinking and listening. Church folk need to learn how to think critically and they need to learn how to listen uh, contextually. Those are two things that I find that if, that if church folks, boy, if we can ever uh, get anointed in those two areas, <laughs> listening contextually and thinking critically. Oh boy, we we be something to handle. Uh, but 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 every day, every day. Sometimes I just gotta write a comment and just say sigh. You know, just uh, because you know we just we gotta come up. We gotta do better in that area. So um, uh, let's see, uh, Basileos. Regarding blessing Israel, I'm sure they pull from Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Sheep and the goat nations being rewarded, judged based on how they dealt with the brethren. Uh, um, it's possible that they, I've never heard that text being used to support it, but I'm sure, you know, when, when, when folks are looking to uh, support their presupposition, it's called proof texting. So they'll find any scripture that they think agrees with what they are saying. That's called proof texting because you're taking that verse out of the text, out of its context of meaning and seeking to apply it to something that it doesn't actually mean or support. It, it's called proof texting. So I'm sure there are probably a dozen other proof texts that we we didn't cover uh, that um, that that there's an attempt to 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 use to. Uh, but I, I definitely appreciate you bringing that up. Um, uh, Mark Earl. Uh, Warren says, all scripture is based on a situation, a circumstance, and time. Are we not supposed to take scripture and make it applicable to our modern day lives? Now, that is also a very good question. And uh, what, what did Paul say? He says, he, says, um, he tells us uh, that all scripture uh, is for our example and for our learning. It doesn't mean that it all applies directly to us. So, so we got to understand that there are some there are some scriptures that there are some universal truths that we can learn from that are universal, but the specific context and application of it belongs to the historical context itself. So, so we can learn a lot from all scripture. That doesn't mean that every promise belongs to, belongs to you or belongs to me. That's totally different. Learning some things, application is not the end all be all. There's some scriptures you can learn from but there's no direct application to it in our modern time. See, till a lot of this topical preaching thinks uh, has people thinking that unless there's some application to the sermon, that it wasn't a, a good sermon. 
everything doesn't have application in order for you to learn. It doesn't necessarily mean, in, 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 uh, if somebody is preaching from, uh, uh, if somebody is preaching uh, Romans chapter one, and, and, and I'm, I'm learning about the apostasy of, uh, of, 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 of mankind as a result of the fall and how they've taken uh, uh, the, um, the things of God and have applied it to creatures and things that they have made and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, it, even if that doesn't have any application to me, there's something that I can learn from that. But everything, you know, maybe that was a bad example. But again, everything doesn't have to have application in order for it to be relevant to, to contemporary readers of scripture. Some things, as Paul said, are for our learning, not necessarily for our application. And when we try to make application out of everything, that's when we end up allegorizing. Now, there is a difference between allegory, which is a genre of, 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 of it's like a, an extended metaphor. There's a difference between allegory and allegorizing. Allegorizing is the overuse of metaphor and typology. It is when you are always trying to say, this thing represents that, this thing is symbolic for that. And, 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 and then that no longer has any intrinsic meaning historically of its own. That is not how we interpret scripture. And, and what happens with the application kind of uh, uh, thinking is, is that people will make application up when they can't find it by allegorizing the text so that every person in the scripture becomes a type of us. Every, everything in the surrounding text, the rock becomes a type of stumbling. Uh, the cloud becomes a type of the Holy Spirit. Uh, water becomes a type of showers of blessing, rain. Everything becomes a symbol for something else because people are so desperate for application that they start twisting the historical contextual meaning of scripture. So, so application is not the end all uh, be all of exegetical, hermeneutical and, uh, and preaching enterprise. We're not always looking for application. We are looking for people to grow in their understanding of the word of God, therefore growing in grace, growing in Christ, so forth and so on. Some things are just not application oriented. So we can't make it that. And uh, But that's a great question. I'm glad that you said that. But everything in scripture doesn't apply to us today. And uh, so um, great question. Um, yeah, uh, 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 Dr. Michael Donaldson, it says uh, they don't have an open mind, nor do they desire to uh, in uh, many uh, circumstances. That, that is exactly correct. It's, you know, People are reading the scripture with a closed mind in, in, in terms of they're not looking to understand it within its own context. They're looking only to get what they can get out of it. In, in, in other words, the scripture is just a sounding board or just a means to an end. And, and that's all people are looking for. They're not looking for, they're not looking to, to take it for what it really is and what it actually says. You can't counsel the scriptures. The scriptures counsel us. We don't counsel it. It is not for us to tell it what it should mean. It is for us. It is for the scriptures to tell us what it does mean. And, and, and context, sometimes the context is not all found in everything that you're reading there because context is not just what it says. Context has to do with the language that's being used. It's got to do sometimes with the literary genre and the figures of speech that are employed. Sometimes it's got to do with the geography, but sometimes it's got to do with historical realities uh, that are not actually mentioned in the text, but they are mentioned extra biblically. So for instance, when, and, and then I've got to run, but when Jesus, when, when, when Jesus um, has a conversation uh, about his cousin, John, and then he, and then he says, uh, um, uh, if, if it says, uh, if a man, uh, divorces his wife, uh, and marries another, uh, that, um, he commits adultery and, 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 and she, or whoever divorces her husband and marries another, uh, she commits adultery. Um, see, see, again, 
if you don't know the entire context of that, you can't make draw a theological conclusion. And part of the context is not actually mentioned there. Part of the context is historical. And, and so the context there, Jesus is talking about, uh, he's talking about uh, Herod. And, uh, and, and he's talking about that particular situation. And, uh, and scripture does mention that situation, but extra biblical history also gives us more information about what Herod and Heroditus did uh, that drew Jesus's kind of reaction. So, so, so everything in context is not right necessarily there in the, in the text itself. Some things that are related to the context are found in uh, historical or archaeological sources that inform the text. So, so, so don't think just because you're reading something that you know all that there is to know about what it is that you're reading. That's why you cannot counsel the text. It is the text that must counsel you. So uh, that's it, my friends. God bless you. Thank you. Please share the video. Don't forget to go to uh, the new webpage, urbanlogia.org, as well as the uh, Facebook uh, like page, uh, Urban Logia Ministries. And I want some feedback, and we've got some things that, um, that are on the website. More things are coming, but there are some things that are already there uh, that you will find to be an incredible blessing. So I would love your feedback. There are some free videos and free blogs. If you put your, uh, your name and your email address in, it will unlock. Uh, so we, we, we're trying to find ways to be able to really reach out to the Facebook audience. And so, so help me out if you would please be so kind to do that. Uh, God bless you again in Jesus' name.